All right, so this is going to be a movie review of a movie called uh, Don't Touch the White Woman. The plot is very confusing. It's a 1974 movie by an Italian director, film in France, about um, General Custer and City Sitting Bull with Pr Richard Nixon as the president. I uh, hope you can follow what I said because it makes absolutely no sense. There's a medicine man dude who is like an ecologist, collectivist, freak, nut. He he, he goes around naked and um, he looks quite old, like in his 50s. And his head is shaved. Um, Sitting Bull looks ridiculous. He looks like um, the white tribe dude in um, the Mighty Gorga. I was expecting him to go something like uh, oh mighty Gorga but he didn't do that he smoked a peace pipe uh, I thought Sitting Bull was supposed to be uh, some sort of spiritual uh, religious figure maybe doing lots of peyote I don't know but um, the historical inaccuracies abound in this movie uh, Catherine D I, I don't know how to pronounce her last name uh, plays Custer's um, mistress I guess and they don't really have any um, any um, nudity in this film it's just um, her and sort of a see-through negligee but you really can't see much um, by this time she's probably in her mid thirties um, she's not looking too hot um, she packed on some pounds in the seventies and um, first 30 minutes her face looks like it was dipped in Vaseline her skin color looks pale and uh, she she's wearing some kind of orange colored wig uh, I guess she's a redhead in this movie I've never seen her in a redhead uh, she was good and um, Belle du jour and another flick called uh, Repulsion I really love those two movies and she's pretty hot for a white woman. I can understand why they say don't touch the white woman, but she's kind of washed up in this movie. And uh, she's got her usual stoic look on her face, sort of like um, James Taylor and Tulane Blacktop. Uh, during the first 30 minutes, at least, she's like that. And then she tries to fake a smile and a laugh, but and, and uh, lustful glee, I guess, at Custer, but you can tell it's not part of her personality and I think she was mis typecast for this role to be honest with you um, I guess they just wanted to put her name on there to generate more theater revenue uh, there's another big star from uh, Italy um, his name is Marcello or something uh, he's, he was in La Dolce Vita and he does, did another Fellini flick called um, Eight and a Half Women I think I didn't like either of those two movies too much. I hated La Dolce Vita. The only good scene in that one was uh, the famous uh, fountain scene. The rest of it was boring. And then um, Eight and a Half Women, the only reason to watch that one is Barbara Steele, plus the first, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of the movie, uh, Eighteen and a Half Women. But other than that, uh, you know, movies. European movies from the 70s basically suck unless you're talking about Pasolini, uh, another communist turd. But at least his movies were halfway decent. Uh, this Italian director, I don't even know his name, but uh, this is the first time that I've seen one of his movies and it's pretty bad. Uh, I had to give it one star on Netflix. and uh, There's a the other thing I want to say about this movie, uh, there are a couple of capitation scenes. Uh, they look really fake and very minimal blood squirts out. So, um, so if you need gore, um, even the gore effects in this movie look cheap. And um, I'm not sure why they have pictures of Richard Nixon all over the place. Uh, Tricky Dick by this time, 1974. Uh, his, his political career was headed downhill fast. I mean, Congress was wrapping up the Vietnam War. He was um, on television telling people that he was not a crook and uh, he was getting ready to resign. 
and uh, Ford pretty much took over for two years, I think, if my history is correct. Uh, so I don't know if there was a delay getting this movie distributed, and I'm not sure what this Italian creepy director has against Richard Nixon, but um, I would think the left or the so-called progressive, so-called uh, populists over in Europe would um, would like Nixon because he opened up the door to China. He gave us the the uh, federal EP environmental protection agency. He imposed uh, wage and price controls. I mean, those are all the things that uh, France and Italy were doing in the 70s, I suppose. Uh, we had just a, as much communism in the United States as they did. So I don't know why these uh, art house directors in Europe from the 70s, they hate uh, America so much. But um, uh, the story, the, the premise was intriguing. I mean, uh, the Lakota Indians... Uh, Native Americans, I guess they're called nowadays, uh, politically correct term, were mistreated, and uh, they fought back and they won. So that was pretty cool. But I don't think uh, Sitting Bull was necessarily the chief of the tribe. He was more like a uh, religious, spiritual leader. That's my understanding. And I have some uh, some cool Lakota silver coins uh, that were issued recently from 2009, I think, uh, with a picture of Sitting Bull on, on the... Um, on the front of the coin and then it just says 50 on the back I'm not sure what the 50 means but um, yeah Russell Means um, I'm a big fan of Russell Means he's a Lakota uh, tribe member and a famous actor a libertarian activist so uh, so I'm interested by um, what the film had to say um, but uh, I think the director got the history wrong got the politics wrong um, so I hate this movie. I'm sorry that um, that the blondie slash um, redhead was in this movie. She she looked horrible. I, I I don't think she was comfortable at all in this role. But I could be wrong. Um, she's a great actress otherwise, and I don't know why she chose to be in this movie. I guess she was um, in a lot of European art house movies at the time from the 60s and the 70s. And she actually appeared in The Hunger with um, David Bowie in 1983. So I don't know too much about her uh, acting career, but I'd like to see more of her movies. She's She was pretty back in the 70s, uh, back in the 60s, I'm sorry. Then it started going downhill in the 70s. And I haven't seen The Hunger. I'd like to see that movie. And I uh, don't know too much about her other movies. But overall, I hated this movie. And... Um, European movies that are from the 60s and the 70s that are really good, uh, those are hard to find. Um, Dario Argento, Mario ba Bava, um, Pasolini, as I mentioned. Um, that's about it. If you're looking for some decent, um, for some decent movie, don't look for movies filmed in France or Sweden. Look, look for Italy. Those are the um, those are the uh, decent movies from the 60s and 70s. Italy, maybe Mexico, but not uh, Sweden or France. Uh, any film that that uh, comes out of or was um, shot in France or Sweden from the 60s or 70s, uh, that's an automatic um, bias, prejudice against that type of movie on my part. But... Um, if you're into that kind of thing, if you're a communist or a uh, leftist and you're into social revolution, uh, you probably get a kick out of this film because it shows uh, the downtrodden fighting back and winning. Um, but that wasn't really the story behind Sitting Bull or um, General Custer, as it were. Um, that's the kind of message that the director tries to get across, and I don't think it's uh, historically accurate, but... Um, and then Richard Nixon throwing his picture in there just makes it even worse. Uh, so that's my review. Um, thanks for watching again. I, I'm almost up to 200 views on my channel, so I've only been doing this for about a month. So thanks for uh, hanging in there, and um, hopefully you're watching my videos till the end. I think that's all I have to say about this movie. It sucks, and um, I wouldn't recommend it. It's about two hours long, too. And it really drags on, so um, 
doesn't make any sense to me. It's uh, boring. It's not funny. Uh, the jokes aren't funny, and the Fr French people or the the European people look ridiculous with those black wigs. They, they look like the white tribe from uh, from Mighty Gorga, as I said before. Uh, so this film looks cheap and uh, and uh, poorly acted, poorly cast, poorly directed. Everything about it sucks. All right, later.